adding 10% and we have uh, taking out 11% on our short term, the overall accumulation would be a total of negative one. So it's going to populate, let's just say negative one at this break point. And we're going to know at that frequency that we have to update it by that amount. There's going to be that much of a difference in the closed loop fuel trim. It's going to tell us how much we actually have to update our mass airflow sensor curve. And it's going to be very, very accurate. So let's go ahead and go back and start our scanner again. And we can see that um, our engine RPM here is reading zero. Mass airflow sensor is reading zero hertz. All the other uh, pertinent information here is essentially it's not doing anything because we haven't started the engine. Let's go ahead and fire up the engine and then take a look at this. Let's go ahead and start it. And we can see that our mass airflow sensor here is showing that we have around uh, 3300 hertz and it's specifically tracing here in the table exactly where we're operating in the mass airflow sensor frequency. So it's, you can see it's bouncing here and that's where we're operating. So if we uh, jump back into our table here, we can see that we're going to be operating right around in this range here. So if we look at the reported value here, we, we see 1.37 pound per minute. And that's what the mass airflow sensor is calculating for air mass from our actual uh, uh, lookup table here. So we're at uh, 3,250 hertz approximately. We jump in here. We're right around this range right here. Now the units are different. They're pound per hour uh, units here. If we, we can scale it down, pound per minute. Let's jump back here. We click on this, it changes the unit scale. Oh, skipped over it one more time. Let's try that again. I'm going too fast. Um, we can get it in pound per minute units. Let's try that. Okay, so now we're operating right around here uh, in this range, and we're reporting a value of 1.29 pound per minute. If we jump back in the table, we can see the values right now are between 1.184 and 1.309. So using an averaging feature between these two, we're going to be getting a calculated value of approximately 1.26 pound per minute. And that's how we get our air mass. So our air mass has been established. We've also provided the injector data. So we've also provided the injector stoichiometric point. And therefore, we're able to determine the actual fuel mass and calculate it into an injector pulse width. So we can see that here. We can see that we have our stoichiometric uh, air fuel, uh, where did you go here? Stoich, uh, equivalent air fuel commanded, uh, 0.99 lambda or 14.0 air fuel. So it's telling us our commanded air fuel. And then our fuel trims are going to report how much it's corrected. Now at this point, because we just flashed the PCM, we can see it's an open loop, not ready. So the fuel trims aren't doing anything at this point. We're not actually making any corrections. And that's why we see zero on the table right here. It's going to take a little bit before it's going to go and get into closed loop mode. And then it's going to start reporting the trim values here. So we're going to, it's going to wait a little bit until it warms up. We can see the engine coolant temperature is at 136. Um, and I've also flashed the PCM. So it might take here a minute or two until our trims come back online. And it goes from open loop not ready to closed loop status.